this is our unit for today. We're going to switch out the old four ton here. The old 1995 ream unit, high efficiency, 13 sear. Back in 1995, that's like having a 20 sear unit. We're going to take this thing out. We might have to cut it up because it's so huge. It'll go down and underneath the deck, all the way around the back of the house and back around. We'll bring the new unit, which is a Bryant Evolution two stage unit. Set it up here. Oh, happy day. Here's our air handler. We've we've seen it before in service videos. Zach HVAC has a video on here of us checking this system out. American Home Shield worked on it. Really slaughtered it. Old ream, good stuff. I changed out the ductwork a few years ago. It's mostly hard pipe. There's a couple flex connectors right there, but it's a 20 20 inch plenum on the supply. And it splits into two 14s, and there's two 14 inch returns as well. So we're gonna get to work, start taking things apart, take the ducts, the ducts off of it. On either side, hopefully we'll be able to reuse both connections. We shall see. Have our squared around loose. I took our box off the back. It's sitting back there. I'm gonna go into the inside. I can take out this blower, take out that coil. The coil's new. And unwire the unit back here. Let's see, there's a screw right there. I gotta take that out and get our high voltage taken off and low voltage. And make this a little bit lighter when we carry it out. Use my special drain removal tool. Oh, fits every size drain. See? Our air handler is taken apart. Our blower was right here. We had three screws and it just slides right out. The coil itself, as you can see here, it's an aluminum coil, it's a replacement coil, it's made by Allstyle. Evidently Allstyle started replacing the original ream coils. The original coil had a TXV, this one has an orifice. I did not put this coil in. I would guess they were supposed to add a TXV, but they didn't, but oh well. Coming out now. our Bryant Evolution unit up on the stand. That was a super duper pain in the ass to do. We went in from underneath here, underneath all the way out to the other side, this monster deck here. Problem was, we slid in and it was fine. We got to about this point and there's dropped girders here and here. We had to go underneath them, but the unit was too tall. So we had to actually take the unit apart while we were underneath there to get it the rest of the way. So it was it was a good time. But it's over there now, so we're gonna concentrate on the air handler. So if I had to come back tomorrow, I can be outside with the heat pump. Or it'll be nice. We are preparing to hang the air handler up. We have, let's see, let me get the name right on these things. I call them Sammy's, because Top Tech Wood Vertical Hangers for 3 8 all thread rod. So you see our all thread rod there. We have one, two, three, four. And we'll put our all thread rod down here, one on the other side, and beneath it will be a unistrut hanger. You see the unistrut hangers there. Underneath this end and the opposite end, and then there'll be two long ones that go underneath the air handler all the way down to the end. And we can put some cork pads on top of those to isolate vibration to the floor. Works pretty good in these tall crawl spaces where you want to set it on the ground. And we need that sort of rise to get to our drain. I'll make our drain fall as it goes way over there. So that's what we're doing now. I'll catch up with you guys after we're done. We have our air handler in place. We have a unistrut passing back, passing here to the back, then two long runs across. The air handler sitting on top of that. High voltage wiring right there in the way. We are. Our drain is now complete. We had a problem with our drain sagging. We had a little bit of this number. But we have solved that problem, or brother has, and we have a float switch in it. Because even though our stuff is in the crawl space, I still like to have a float switch in it so it won't back up and overflow 
and caused some IAQ problems. So I used this SS1, SS1 switch and safety switch. And it runs over here. I put a little grommet in. We intercept the Y1 so it'll shut off the compressor. I like to shut off only the compressor with the float switch. The reason why, I know a lot of guys do the red. I like to have the ability to still turn the fan on so if it's a hot day and uh, no one's coming quickly to see what's going on with the unit, there'll still be some air movement in the house. Even though it does kind of throw you off. Sometimes you go outside when you should have been inside. So, but Another reason I like the Bryant Carrier Variable Speed Air Handlers is this very service friendly switching area on the circuit board where you can switch different aspects of the unit configuration, tonnage, what type of unit it is, CFM adjustment, on and off delay. It's very easy and it's just written right there on there so you can see it, including the CFM. So it's pretty cool. We're now pulling a vacuum on the system. Have a little cool piece of micron gauge set up. Just started. We're gonna pull a vacuum. I'm gonna check the wiring up here. My brother asked me to check it out while I was back over here. And then we will go ahead and I'll insulate this copper line, put up the thermostat on the inside of the house. We'll be close to starting this. All right guys, we're running at high stage right now, 12.3 amps. It's typically how I follow along what stage we're in. Low stage we ran about nine amps, now we're running 12.3. of a 22 degree split. We're actually putting out a little bit more than four times according to this chart, but I don't have an exact airflow. I have an estimated airflow I'm working with. 262 over 104. I have to add some more refrigerant to the machine, but as you see, it is pretty quiet. We're sitting right in front of it. You hear more of the road noise in the machine itself. So I'm gonna add some refrigerant to get our 12 degrees of subcooling. And uh, then we'll be pretty much wrapped up with this job. Have the R410A out here, guys. We're going to throttle it in with this ball valve on this hose going into the suction line over here. Because we have a heat pump, I can take my liquid pressure off down here near the compressor and I can introduce my refrigerant here at the suction line. I put the refrigerant here so that it will it will become gas before it gets to the compressor. The other line is closer to the compressor so I don't take the risk. Just keep it as far back as possible even though I let it in very slowly so it becomes a gas. But I'm going to go ahead and put it in because over here as we see we have only 0.2 degree subcooling so we have a ways to go. So I'm going to go ahead and add the refrigerant we need and I will catch you guys on the flip side. We are about Two pounds into charging, 275 over 96, getting kind of cold inside. We have an 8.5 degree subcooling right now, so we're almost there. I'm going to add the last little bit of charge. As you can see, we have our probe still taking our measurements. Our indoor air probes are in the return grill and supply grill to get our temperatures. So what I'm going to do is add this little bit of charge and we should be done with this, and I'll give you a little bit of a shot of the unit running from a distance so you can see how quiet it is because it's actually pretty impressive and I like how it's put together. We have a transformer outside for the board. We have a connection for our evolution controller and a connection for a regular thermostat. We have our contactor and capacitor play voltage wiring there. So pretty basic yet real efficient real quiet. So so far so good. We're all done charging end up putting about 25 pounds almost three pounds in the machine to get the charge correct our sub is bouncing from 10 to around 11 degrees so we're good to go compressor is running at 12.7 amps everything looks good I'm gonna button everything back up take my hoses loose get everything picked up but I think we were successful today so real impressive with the machine we did put the dryer outside I don't want to blame anybody but it was my brother's fault. But we did paint it. It actually already braised it in, so I mean, we'll just paint it up real nice and it'll last a long time. It'll last longer than that dryer. Here's our unit running. You can barely hear it. Really nice. Reminds me of the Ohio main lines. I guess they're pretty similar to that as far as sound. But everything worked out pretty good. Uh, I'll definitely sell the system again. I think it's worthwhile. It's also a coastal unit, it's a BNC. So it's coastal grade, so you can actually put it on the at the beach. Don't know if that means it'll last seven years instead of five or ten years instead of five, but it's supposed to be rated for that sort of environment. But I've really enjoyed installing this one. It worked really well. I like the air handler. 
simple variable speed air handler that works great with this to have a two-stage system but until I see you guys again guys I'm leaving my job and going to check out a unit where I had to replace an accumulator and an evaporator I went over there about six months ago the system was charged up they said they wanted to wait so they could get the money to replace the accumulator and evaporator. Even though it was under warranty, they had to replace a refrigerator that was lost. It was a big deal because you had to pump the system down to replace the accumulator anyway. So they are ready to do it, so I'm going to go grab that stuff. But we're leaving the Bryant install. And I wanted to mention one other thing that I wanted them to go ahead and zone the system. Because it's two stage, it's sort of perfect for zoning. I had two 14 inch legs of the trunk going either way off of that system and it would be perfect to zone the living area and the master bedroom suite as two different zones you have a two zone system you have a two stage system you can lock out the second stage when one zone is calling so you you never have to have a bypass uh, no bypass because you will never your your zone panel won't allow your system to run in second stage until the second zone comes on so it works really good but they weren't ready for it, so they're gonna do it a little bit later in the summer, and I reiterated to them that it really is a good idea, because then when you go to bed, you can set your temperature, you can set it up in the rest of the house. It's very nice. So I just want to mention that it's a good idea. You can utilize your two-stage equipment if your ductwork will allow it. You sort of step it up a notch to make it even more efficient and more comfortable in the house. But anyway, I'm off to the next job. I'll see you guys on the next one.